Going up and down sand dunes when you're not really conditioned for it, bad idea. <laughs> bad, bad idea. How do you be conditioned for sand dunes? We stretch and I didn't, I don't stretch. <laughs> hey, there we are. Happy Monday, guys. Welcome. This is, um, this is a treat. I get to hang out with Tommy instead of Roman or Andre. <laughs> So that's really good. Yeah, what are they doing today? Uh, your dad is going in uh, having a Geritol treatment. Oh, I think yeah. Andre is going in having hair plugs put in. So they're both <laughs> out there doing stuff, and that's what's important. Now, actually, Andre's finishing up an Ike gauntlet, and I think your dad is off to drive... Yeah, actually, we don't know. Something. They wouldn't tell us what he's off to go look at. It's, it's like a big secret thing. Yeah, super, super secret. Yeah. Shh. Not even, like, honestly, not even we know. He, he literally, he wouldn't tell us anything. So <laughs> whatever. <laughs> So, so today on TFL Now in our live show, um, we're going to go through the most and least dependable cars on sale today, at least according to JD Powers. Yep. So um, their initial quality study, it's based on a survey of 76,256 people who brought ben brand new cars. And this is after their first 90 days of ownership. Now, bear in mind, they pull the people. They're not testing the cars on their own. So a lot of this has to do with the opinion of the people that they are polling. So you have to take this entire thing with a grain of salt. Yeah, so like you mentioned, 76,000 people responded to the survey after the first few months of ownership, and they go over exterior seats, driving experience, engine transmission, all the usual stuff. It's a huge survey, over 233 questions. Now, the industry average is 93 problems per 100 vehicle, and as producer Zach so eloquently pointed out, some vehicles, some people will report three, four issues per vehicle, sure. other people will love the whole thing. So it's, it's average is 93 problems per 100 vehicles. Now these could be minor problems, by the way. It doesn't necessarily mean the transmission fell out you know, underneath your car. <laughs> it doesn't mean that your tires are all gonna blow at the same time. It could mean that one of the window switches is glitchy. It could mean that yeah. the uh, infotainment system may not work the way that the owner wanted it to, or perhaps they're just dissatisfied with the car itself. Yeah, so, you know, pretty much completely subjective here. However, let's start with the single best model they scored. And this is perhaps not a, uh, a big surprise if you know these cars, but that is the Porsche 911. Yes, and if my wife is watching, this is the reason why we should buy the <laughs> 911. It is a super reliable car. It is super reliable. And it does have a back seat. Sort of. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. We just wanted to throw a bit of a shout out there to the Porsche 911. And, uh, but this focuses more on individual car brands right. rather than models themselves. Although we will mention models throughout. We will mention some models throughout. Um, they uh, rank in just about the middle of this thing. So you'll see how this all works out in terms of car brands. Right. So let's start with the top 10 best car brands for this initial survey. So at number 10, we have, uh, well, Toyota, actually, with a par PP, uh, a problems per 100 vehicles at 90. Um, Corolla Avalon did really well, but didn't actually rank highest in their segments. Now, keep in mind, Toyota makes a ton of different models, a ton of different vehicles. So to be number 10 with the entire lineup is pretty impressive. Considering that, once again, we're talking about what could be minor glitches. One person might report seven or eight problems with a car, and 10 other people might report zero problems with a car. So keep that in mind as well. Um, I am a little surprised, nonetheless, that Toyota is number 10 on this list. But remember, this is the top 10, and there are about 40 different makes that could be on here. Yeah, and keep in mind, like you said, it's initial quality. Right. So problems in the first 100 days. So that's important to remember. It's not, you know, full reliability over 500,000 miles. We actually got some donations coming in here. Ooh. So Clinton Harlan gave us $2. Hey, thanks. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. And then uh, Jimmy Baskin gave us 99 cents. Thank you both very much. Now, how much does it cost to get on the board? Or on the, I'm sorry, on the hood? Yeah, we can talk about that. So we actually, here at TFL, if you like what we're doing, um, not saying you do, but if you do and you want to help us out, we've got a line of products that you can purchase here on the live chat. So we have, of course, Welcome to the Hood for all of our super fans, five bucks. Uh, we have our hats for 49, stickers for 10, these really rad patches, uh, yeah, for 25. And then if you're the superest of super fans, we have a hoodie. Yes, which we'll go over in a little bit. Uh, real quickly, the Hood will actually put your name on the Hood if you give us five dollars and you haven't been on the Hood before. So just letting you guys know about that. Once again, that goes to support us and we really do appreciate it. Let's move on to number eight and this is already mind boggling. <coughs> number nine. 
Nine. Yeah. <laughs> I see. I, I took two and combined. Well, you'll understand why I combined them in a moment. Number nine is Lexus. That's why I actually combined it because Toyota Lexus. N once again, very strange because on so many other surveys and so many other things, Lexus is one of the highest ranking when it comes to reliability. However, this is JD Powers and this is based on a survey. So they say uh, the RX was the highest ranked model in its segment. No surprise there. Yeah. Uh, actually, I just got to sit in the new RX. I went out on the launch and it's quite the vehicle. I know a lot of you guys out there, especially if you're watching this channel, are probably car enthusiasts, more interested in the RCF models and the RX, but I will say the new RX is freaking fantastic. Yes. It's a killer car. Speaking of killer cars, you also recently drove the LC. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> come on now. Come on. I mean, I know I'm not 65 years old and... Neither am I. It's a little bit of a stereotype, but whenever you see an LC, 65 year old, but still, I mean, have you seen the car? It is the best looking Japanese car I've seen in the past 20 years. Oh. Hey guys, we got a donation from our friend Tim Esterdahl. Pick up truck. No way, Tim! What's up, SUV Blue Golf Guy? Hey, thank you very much. Well, welcome to the hood. And congratulations, your best friend got married. Um, our buddy Aaron recently got married. Tim, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, one of these days, I'll hopefully be on Tim's show, uh, hopefully in the next uh, month or two. So, Tim, you and I will talk, okay? <laughs> um, let's, let's move on, though, uh, to number eight, which is, just blew my mind, and it's Dodge. So before we get into that, we actually got another <laughs> Disclaimer. donation. Yeah. Oh, we did. No, we, got a, 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 we got a donation from uh, Wallace, Wallace Chan. Chan. Yeah. Five Canadian dollars. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sorry, Canadian dollars aren't quite American. Um, you know what? Put them on the board. <laughs> put them know, on there. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. I'm kidding. He's fine. Uh, thank you very much for your donation, guys. We truly appreciate it. It keeps us going. Actually, with the donations and purchases that you guys have done recently, we've been able to upgrade our mics to these Really, oh, yeah. really nice ones, actually. And remember the big old fuzzy thing? Well, those sucked. These are better, and that's because of you guys, so thank you. And Nathan hasn't dropped them yet. Knocking yeah, on that word. Almost just knocked on I, the mic literally after I said. I know. That's oh, okay, bull in a china shop. What can I say? Um, so Dodge, um, the Challenger, was ranked highest in its segment. Yeah, so number eight on the whole list was Dodge. Which is crazy. Uh, they have three cars, so <laughs> that's... Wow. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, if you think about it, the Challenger goes up against the Mustang and the Camaro. Those vehicles have new platforms two or three times over since the Challenger was reintroduced. <laughs> um, so they've had a long time to get the Challenger right. Well, let's see what else they make. They make the Challenger, which has been out since 08. Mm -hmm. They make the Charger, which has been out since the dawn of time. Yep. And then they make the Journey, which is older than all of us. <laughs> the journey is truly ancient. So they've had a oh, lot oh, 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 Durango. I'm sorry, I forgot oh, about the Durango. Oh, damn, the Durango. So they had a long time okay. to figure out the issues. So um, I did want to point out, because somebody just said in the comments, Dodge more reliable than Toyota? Massive question mark there. I would no. say, I think, well, one of the reasons I think Dodge ranked higher than Toyota here um, and there aren't as many problems. One could be, I don't think there are as many Dodge owners in the survey. There's only there four are. Dodges that are being built. <laughs> that and technologically speaking, so JD Power ranks this survey into eight different categories based on the you know, 233 questions and responses. I don't think there are as many areas where there could be problems for people to complain about with a Dodge as there is with a Toyota. So with Toyota, you can complain about like driver assistance systems that don't work properly. Infotainment system might be giving certain people problems, that sort of thing. Whereas Dodge, and, but but Dodge is ranking higher than Lexus. I almost wonder if part of it is, I hate to say this, but as a Jeep owner, when I buy a new Jeep and the drive shaft falls out, I'm like, eh, it's a Jeep thing. So I wonder if like the Toyota <laughs> people are like, ooh, this panel is a micro millimeter off. Whereas the Challenger Dodge, is like. Yeah, is that a headlight or is that like a hood scoop? I mean, yeah, it's hard to play around, around, okay. destroy their rear drive <laughs> shaft. And, oh, it's a Dodge thing. I'll just replace yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it, there are demons that are detonating transmissions out of the back and knocking over the next county. Having yeah. said that, like I've been, I've been following a lot of the Challenger guys, and the Challengers have proven to be super reliable. Like the Challengers now, they've got all the issues worked out. The 5.7 Hemi is super solid. Um, so it, it's definitely an interesting, uh, and I'm sure we're going to get roasted in the... Uh, in the comment section below, but please, Howard, not us. please roast us. We love yeah, it. Actually, we do want to hear your comments nonetheless. Let's move on to the next one. 
Num Nissan. <laughs> yeah, number seven. So 86 uh, problems per 100 cars, the maximum on the Titan range. And we already see how Nathan feels about that. I'm <laughs> trying really hard to <laughs> not say anything. Yes. yes. Um, once again, this is not our poll. This is J.D. Powers. Um, so yeah, the, the, as he was saying, the Nissan Maxima on the Titan rank highest in their segments. Um, wow, I, I was just in a Maxima and it, 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 it died on me twice. Um, the thing is, is that uh, once again, this has to do with, you know, people being polled and, and how they feel about it. I'm really happy to see that the Titan did rank highest. In fact, I think we did a story on it recently. Um, and the Titan is a fairly well-built vehicle by comparison. So, yay. Um, well done, yeah. Nissan. And keep in mind, um, I, you know, I actually, I really do believe a lot of this list because it's initial quality, so first 90 days. First 90 days. And um, the, the Titan, you know, it doesn't get a lot of credit in the whole truck world, but it's a really well-assembled truck. We beat the crap out of the one we had for like six, eight months? How long did we have that thing? Yeah, I mean, I don't think we took it off red line the entire time. It was just <laughs> on the rev limiter for eight months oh, straight. Man. Well, it, it's funny you say that, because another thing too, I think at least stock, I know you guys will agree with me on this, that V8 makes this one of the best sounding half-ton trucks you can oh, buy, oh. or if not the best. Thing. Yes. Stock, yes, yeah. although the TRD exhaust on the, t on the Tundra is better sounding but nonetheless I mean just a little bit of work in this would sound even better it's a great yeah. truck altogether though and th it has little issues but and yeah we had it we beat it up and we had it for more than 90 days and let me tell you it did great so at least in that case I feel it's deserving let's move on to number six though Tommy yeah number six is Chevrolet so the Equinox the Malibu the Silverado and the Tahoe all ranked highest in their segments um, Chevrolet has a score of 85 problems per 100 cars you know reported in the first 90 days again um, and, um, you know, a lot of them, like, if you look at especially the Silverado HDs, they're, they're really well-made trucks, once again, older platforms. Um, and I, I, don't, I, I don't have any basis in this, but from my limited experience on this planet, I, I find that especially as a car gets older, a lot of the issues are super worked out. So if you look at, like, the Wranglers, 2007 Wranglers were basically basket cases. I mean, they had every issue. Um, but by 2018, the JK was so sorted you know, they'll run forever and ever and ever without many issues. So I, I do find that a lot of the vehicles on the list um, th make sense to me because they're older. Um, and, uh, y you know, they've been around for a while. And especially trucks, right? I mean, trucks, people use them as tools, so they got to work. And they got to work all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Actually, trucks, if they just had a survey for trucks, I have a feeling that it would be a much closer match. Um, yeah, that would be really interesting. They tend to be much more long-lived. And with a truck, when something goes wrong, you replace the component. When a car, something goes wrong, often people replace the car. Yeah. So number well, so number five is Lincoln, 84. Um, Navigator did well. Escalade uh, still beat it in the survey. Um, okay. Number three is uh, num number four we is don't, we Ford. Don't talk about Lincoln. I don't have anything to say about okay. Lincoln. And, and, I, don't, and I don't agree with Lincoln. this because the Lincoln we had, wait, it just was. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Okay. Because that's scenario where you know we we can really give this survey some perspective. Okay. Because the navigator we had last year, I know what you're talking about. Uh huh. It was whisper quiet. It was really nice ride. Awesome powertrain because it has the Raptor twin turbo V6. But the interior trim quality is yeah. The center speaker was peeling up. There were other parts of the dash that were starting to come apart. Bear in mind, this is a new Lincoln Navigator right. with a couple thousand miles on it, right. barely running. So I totally get what you're saying there. Yes. And okay. I did also want to say, not to hog time away No, 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 please, please. There was a comment here from Maui Chris. Um, he said that Chevrolet has an average 85 problems per 100 vehicles. I did want to point out that this it, it could be kind of confusing, but this per 100 thing that JD Power does doesn't mean of 100 cars, 85 Chevrolets have a problem. Yeah. It could be just one car has multiple problems, and then the next five people won't have any problems. Well, that's a, yeah, that's what I said earlier about the Toyota as well. Right. That's exactly it. So, and there are a lot of people who will sometimes just get a lemon where you've got five or six problems in the car, and other times you'll just have a really good car. So this is an interesting question from Star Wolf. You should do a video with all the problems you've had in vehicles. So. This is, huh. this is kind of an interesting point. Um, keep in mind, like, first of all, 99.999% of the vehicles we've ever tested don't have issues. Um, I mean, new cars are so incredibly well made. It's not like, you talk to some of the car and driver people from like the 80s, and they literally have like door panels fall off. 
Yeah, you know, it's, there's citations or stuff. I actually, I have a story about that real quick. Yeah. Okay, I got a Chevy Aveo, um, right, the, the first generation model. I was working at a different company at the time, just writing, and I got it and the driver door wouldn't open at all. Um, so I got in, I closed the door and I could not open the door for the life of me. And because of the way I was parked and everything else, it, it was just like, uh oh, what am I gonna do? So I had to go out the passenger door and for the longest time I couldn't get the door open. They came to take the car away and of course the tow truck driver walks right up to the door and opens it and it opens, no problem. And that was a car that had like 300 miles on it when I got it. But keep in mind like a lot of the vehicles we test are either super early production or even a lot of them Some are pre-production. Pre yeah. So you know, it, you can't judge you know a squeak and a rattle in a pre-production car. We we don't do that though. No. That's one thing we try to hold off on. If we know the car is pre-production and there is a weird right. rattle or something's kind of off, we'll omit that. And that's because you know we know that that car has not officially gone through the line yet. However, if a car's been around for a little while and there are problems, and we've had that, we've had that with everything from Jaguars all the way to Audis. We'll talk about it, and right. that's the, that's what we do. So um, number four on the list, I think we mentioned briefly, was Ford. So uh, Ranger came best in the midsize segment. Uh, F-150 and Escape also did well. All three very solid vehicles. That I can agree with. Yeah. yeah. All three, how do I put this? All three have been around for a while, even though the, uh, the Ranger is new. Is it new? I'm just going to no. leave it there. Is it new? Oh, wow. And there, is and it new? And they're Send all of your U.S. Toys. buyers. So I think this might be kind of a summer romance thing with the Ranger, where people are really psyched just to have the Ranger, mm -hmm. where if there are problems, they may be willing to ignore it. I'm not saying the Ranger has problems. We haven't had problems with it. But some people may be willing to overlook certain things that they wouldn't be willing to overlook and say it's a coma. Yeah, that's, that, that may be. Although I have to say that uh, seeing the trucks roll off the line, they're, they're pretty tight. Um, so, you know, for, for a first run, technically speaking, I think they're pretty well made. Um, so we'll num see. number three, two, and one, um, and actually this is not a surprise to me at all because these are the three brands that are just, just killing it right killing now. Killing it. Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis. Genesis being number one at 63, uh, problem for 100 cars, um, then 70 for Kia and 71 for Hyundai. Um, and like you get, I feel like a lot of the, the internet out there, Sorry if you're one of these people, but a lot of them are living in like 1998 when Kia was building, you know, vehicles that were not up to the standard of the Japanese. But now in terms of design, performance, build quality, I mean, you get into the Kia Telluride and it could actually be a BMW X7. If you get into the Genesis G70, I still say it is not only the best interior in class, I think it's one of the best interiors out there, period. The quality is incredible. They have upped their game and they have to. Um, the reason why is because they know that the minute they falter and they fall behind the Americans or the Japanese, that they're going to have a target removed from their back and they're suddenly going to be relegated to where they were before. And the one thing about Hyundai Kia, and they're basically, yeah, and Genesis, they're all basically one company, is that every year that they've been in the United States, every year they've improved. Yeah. Every single year they found some way to improve in some way. And that is impressive. And I've seen them from the beginning and I used to hate them. I had an early one of their products and I hated it. The thing is, is that they've improved every year. So at least on that part of the survey, I do agree. Um, Tim Estradal says, what is Tommy's hat? Is that a logo or question mark? I have no idea. It was at home and I picked it up. You know what, Tim? That is the new pickup trucks on SUV.com <laughs> special logo emblem. right there. Right. Yeah. If he turns it upside down, it's a happy face just like yours. <laughs> yeah. There you ah. go. Okay. So the five worst ranked cars on this initial quality list. Number five um, is Volvo. Volvo. We're off to a great start here. Are with we? a yeah, 114 <laughs> problems for 100 cars. You're asking, how can 100 cars have 114 problems? I have a theory on that. Several okay. cars could have many. What? I honestly think that most of the problems here with Volvo are either with their twin charge powertrain. Mm -hmm. So problems with the engine, which is supercharged and turbocharged, and in the case of T8 models, also electrified. That's a lot of complexity there. I'm not, you know, again, I I'm not saying though. they're horrendously unreliable cars because from personal experience, we haven't had that problem. But just adding complexity like that just adds to points of failure. The other thing go, is... Go ahead, keep going. Uh, Volvo's uh, census infotainment system. 
Yeah, that I think is the big. That problem. is the big yeah. problem. So I've been I've been checking around. I go on boards because I'm bored and I'm married, um, and I just sometimes <laughs> just read random stuff. And one of the things I've been noticing about Volvos, because I was actually considering one at one point in time. Um, is that a lot of people are having problems with the infotainment system and on some of the internal electronics. So far, Zach, not a whole lot of complaints about powertrain, but a lot of complaints, a lot of complaints about their infotainment system. And you know what? That's kind of something that historically has been an issue with Volvos for the past 20 years. So, yeah, something to think and about. And actually, on that, that note, um, a lot of you guys in the live chat right now are like, well, how can Lexus be that low? Um, I almost wonder if a lot of that is also the infotainment system. Mm. Because the Lexus infotainment system is its better than new RX. I'm the big RX guy now. But in every other model, it's just its a mess. So I mean, keep in mind, like, like you said earlier, it, these issues can, are not necessarily like, oh my god, my transmission just fell out. They could be, uh, it takes forever you know, to get to the nav screen from the audio screen. Or there's a glitch in the screen where it flickers, stuff like that. I mean, yeah. if, if you actually go into JD Powers and look at what they're actually saying, some of these um, complaints are rather simple and basic. And in some cases, people just don't like the way a car drives. Yeah, Remember sure. that. Uh, let's move on to the next one, which makes me sad, but I am not surprised. Number four, Alfa Romeo with 118 problems per 100 cars. Uh, yeah. Okay, number three. Oh, come <laughs> I love Italian cars, and I love the Alfa Romeos. I think they're beautiful, and they're so much fun to drive. And I don't disagree with this number at all. I, they're, they're glitchy. They, all of the Italian cars that have come here have so far proven to be less than um, reliable in some ways. Go for it, Zach. He has something to say. I'm just jumping in on behalf of one of the commenters here who was asking about Fiat while we're on the subject of SCA. <laughs> oh. Um, they yeah. fell off the list. They literally the, fell off the list, guys. The <laughs> reason they, Fiat fell off the list is because, at least this is what J.D. Power is saying, their survey sample size was too small to count them among the other brands, which, to me, means that not enough people bought Fiat's to, to take complain. place in the survey in the first place. I will say, though, in the last J.D. Power initial quality survey, they did rank last. They did, uh, but but important to note, in terms of their vehicles, their most reliable vehicle is actually up there on other lists as well as being okay, and that's the regular 500. The basic 500 with the manual transmission is actually considered to be a fairly reliable car. Because there's nothing to break. Well, pretty much. So, But the rest of the vehicles, especially the 500L, which everybody dislikes, um, is the worst car ever made. Um, in, in, in the world. Okay, let's move on uh, to uh, number three. Number three is um, Mitsubishi. So, yeah. um, once the maker of World Rally Cross winners, they're now the maker of the Eclipse Cross. Other cars. Um, so, uh, they used to be my favorite automaker. Yes. Uh, yeah, Montero days. Um, they are uh, 121 complaints per 100 cars. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay, and then number two <laughs> and one. Uh, this makes me so sad. Like this is. See, just, this is a depressing day for us. This is such a bummer. Go, you want to go tell me? You want me to tell him? What? Yes, go for it. Okay. Number two is Land Rover, and number one, Jaguar. Yeah. Jaguar. Um, Tommy is a very big Land Rover fan. Yeah. Um, he actually insisted that we keep and repair our rescue la ran Land Rover that required Land Rover savings. This is like what I, what I, I, really, uh, I really struggle with, especially Land Rover, because up through, let's say, 2016, 2017, I really loved their lineup. I loved their V. I I like the, 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 all the discos, Disco 1, 2, and 3, LR4. Mm. Um, great vehicles. They're, they're just so fun to drive. You know, Disco 2 had such a bad reputation in the United States for I liability. <laughs> yeah, but they, it was so bad here in the U.S., they had to change the Discovery name to LR3. Everywhere else in the world it was Discovery, but here in the U.S. it was LR3. And, and like that, this is such a bummer to me because it's such a good vehicle in terms of its driving dynamics and its affordability. But the one thing that they need to get right is the one thing they just can't get right. Over and over and over, and I'm just tired of it. And I want them to be good cars. It's I, I feel like I'm not a, a dad, but I feel like a, a as dad. As far as we know. Well, sorry, Tommy, I couldn't help it. <laughs> Roman, right now, seeing that. Thanks, Nathan. Ah! Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but, tell tell them what the main issue is. Just all of it. 
<laughs> I mean, in our discovery too, the whole thing. I mean, it's it's just like the the, the engines were bad. The the drive shafts were bad. The transmissions had issues. Electrically, they were a mess. The rear part of the frame rusted out. The diffs were good. But the rest of it, the, the ABS system was bad. And then you get the LR3, and they had issues with the transmissions, and then the air suspensions failed. It was just like, God. Ah. A concophony of horribleness. And the thing is, is that I owned the first generation, a 1996 Discovery. And I absolutely loved it. It was a manual, which was really rare. The thing is, is that my wife was so sick and tired of constantly seeing the Exxon Valdez leaking in our driveway. And, you know, I did that funny joke of, well, at least it means it still has oil. And the fact that I am still walking vertical, I, she was tit, and I, rightfully so. But I actually did read an interesting um, factoid today. 90% um, of all Land Rovers ever made are still on the road. However, 10% have actually made it home. So, <laughs> I tried to keep it straight. He, told, he said that joke before. That's basically where we're at right now with our discovery. Love it to death. Isn't that great? Would never get rid of it, but you, that's how I you feel. You guys are more upset about Land Rover. I'm actually more upset about Jaguar. Um, honestly, I think they are some of the most beautiful cars I agree. ever designed. And that's because... Ian Callum had a hand in oh, designing them. Oh, didn't he leave? Out of, yeah, because he was so sick and tired of the cars breaking. Yeah, down. so we'll see. <laughs> nice. So we'll see where Jag goes from here. I love Jaguars. But Don't get me wrong. I, they're sexy cars. They make me look. Everyone, good. pretty yeah. much, is sexy. It's like it's even their crossovers. Like they're good-looking cars. They're it's just that they were better. And they're fun More to drive. More reliable. Yeah, they're fun to drive. Yeah, they're they're right. The up there. technology's great when it works. When it works. So we had a. Um, I need you to be quiet for a sec, but we had a Jaguar X-Type, and it was mercifully reliable. I mean, it was brilliant. It had the Ford engine, um, the, the drivetrain was brilliant, uh, electronics were fine. The issue is you did have to drive around in an X-Type. That was the drawback with that vehicle. But from a reliability standpoint, it was very solid. You know what? At that time, Ford had a partnership with Jaguar, and all of a sudden, the electronics started working. All of a sudden, you know, the pneumatics and all the other components that were in there that made things go up and down worked. All of a sudden, switches that you would actually flip up would actually go back when you flipped it down. And you didn't have to worry about reverse ground like the old days. All of these things started working when Ford came along. It's all the jokes aside. And when Ford left and they were kind of left in the ether and then taken up by Tata, Tata could have spent the money and the time to make them reliable. Instead, they injected them with money for new product. And I think that that was a mistake. As awesome as those cars are, Zach, I agree. And as beautiful as those, all of those cars are, I agree. Here's the good news. We recently did a video about the new Land Rover Defender. And that is available on, is that what is it's that? It's on, on TFL Now. It's on it's, this channel. It's on this channel. And uh, Roman and I had a chance to go through some of the details, new details about the vehicle, including some really cool pictures. So you should check that out after you're done with this video. Yeah, so let's go, you know, real, really quickly about what we noticed. So um, spy photos, um, Colorado, not ours, but, you know, we couldn't catch it. But here they are. Um, rear suspension is independent. Oh, yeah which is a big deal, although mm. we, we all kind of figured it. Yeah, they, they have to share components in order to keep the thing somewhat affordable. Yeah, uh, there was a two-door and a four-door configuration. Mm -hmm. um, there was actually two different versions. There was one with coil springs and one with air springs. That's huge. Which is really cool. Yeah, yeah, the fact that they have coil springs means that there's going to be an entry-level version, which actually may not fail on you as you're going off-road, because let's face it, if you have an air suspension, it will eventually go bad. Yes, and um, even like, the best in the best, the Lexus GX. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll still go bad. Yep. So, uh, but anyway, it's cool that it's it's you know there's a two door version. Oh, we actually saw the interior as well. Yes. Uh, and um, this is actually kind of exciting because it's a super different interior than you'd find in other JLR products. So you got a unique shifter. It's kind of this aggressive looking steering wheel, and it's all very fancy and hoity toity. But it's not a proprietary to the particular model. Yeah. And the good thing is, is that with the square sides and the big windows. That's actually a proper thing for off-roading, and I like that part. It's got a rear tire hanging off the back, which is kind of cool. Uh, the tires themselves are a little spooky to me because they look street biased. However, this is a test mule, so perhaps there'll be something a little bit more aggressive in the no, future. I don't think so. Mm. Uh, what I So, just nerding out for a sec, like Land Rover went through this huge shift in 2005, and then Range Rover did it a year or so earlier where... They went from like old school body on frame solid axles to more unibody based construction with terrain management. And it works pretty well for them, uh, but they're, they're pushing it to the limits. 
uh, and like a Velar, and it's getting to the point now where the vehicles themselves are getting more and more street worthy to the point where the terrain management just can't keep up. I mean, if you've got a great platform and then add terrain management, you can make it excellent. If you have an okay platform and add terrain management, you can make it okay. If you've got kind of a car and add terrain management, it's still going to be a car. Case in point, how do you boys feel about the so-called Road Rover? Remember that? Like, Land yeah, Rover is reportedly working on this soft rotor that's not quite on the same level, at least not in terms of off-road ability, as the full-fledged Range Rover. I would love to say, oh, that's going to be a rally car. So It's not. Uh, Trucker Dan videos, five bucks. He's been oh. on the board so much. Trucker Dan, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in, dude. Yeah, so he says, uh, hey, guys, I'm a little late. What do you think of the Hyundai Sonata Hybrid? Good car. Really good car. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's a solid commuter. It's not exactly anything that uh, is going to stop time or blow up my skirt, but <laughs> it is definitely a solid car. Gets great mileage, it's got good reliability. Newsflash, Nathan wears a skirt. Have you seen the new Sonata? This wouldn't be the first time. Have you seen the design of the new Sonata? Yeah, I'm not really big on the new oh. Sonata's front end at all. Really? Um, oh, it's so good. So we actually, um, here at TFL, we've got some fun stuff going on. Um, Nathan's got the... Uh, VW Artion. Artion. The Artion. Artion. Um, I, I guess it's right. Zach, Artion. I, 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 Allegedly, I, it's Artion. Arti that's how I, that's how I, I do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so basically, uh, it's, a re it's based on a Passat platform, and it's got a fastback. Yep, so we've got that. Um, we also have something called the Toyota. I mess it up every time. FRS GT8790, Toyota 86 is at the office right now. Uh, it's the TRD one, so it's 1400 made, it's black with some cool stripes. We've got a review on that. We've got the Civic Type R. Um, Andre's got the 3500 Ram. Andre also has um, bed bugs and the Silverado HD. Log story. <laughs> cool. Log story. Poor. Poor Andre. I was just laughing at his pain makes me feel better, though. Uh, the thing is, is that uh, there's a little bit more. We also have a Subaru video coming soon to now. Well, how'd you do that? <laughs> You'll have to watch and find out, but it is the Forester, and we did get a chance to drive it in the hills, just not off-road yet. Um, and there's more. There's a lot more coming. So we have all of that coming down the pike, guys. Let's answer some quick questions quick here. Quick questions. Um, on, um, you're not Andre. Andre's not here. Andre's not He's got <laughs> bed bugs. He's itching right now on a car ride. So. Uh, yeah. What do you guys think of an 06 or 07 Impreza? Um, the regular Impreza? The only problem I have with it in Colorado is that it's really low to the ground. Uh, that's why I always tell people if they're interested in that, go a little bit later and then get up the, the XV Crosstrek. That has really good ground clearance. It's surprisingly low, but I mean, it's a solid car. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Slow, uh, it's very slow. Um, what did you think of the Forester? The Forester, um, I can say this. They managed to do a lot right and one thing wrong. Oh yeah? Mm -hmm. What was the one thing wrong? They killed fun. What do you mean they killed fun? That, They're just gonna have to watch the video you're to find have to out watch how, they killed how they actually did it. But the bottom line is that I, I, I owned a Forester and they, they used to be kind of fun to drive. Um, but the thing is, is that they still did a lot of really cool things with it, and if you're, yeah, just watch the video, you'll find out. Okay, what about Tommy's JK? My JK is actually gone. Uh, well, we have to do like a fleet update video, but the, uh, I actually sold the JK to this woman in um, Golden, who is more excited than I've ever seen anyone ever. He bought a 1962 Mercedes with that money. I didn't buy a, but an 82 Mercedes. I've got a diesel. Um, any updates on the TFL Land Cruiser? Yes. So we actually, our friends at Metal Tech 4x4 hooked us up with rock sliders. I, I say rock sliders, they're more like rock destroyers. They weigh seriously 200 pounds or something. They are incredible pieces of engineering. Um, massive, so that those just went on the Land Cruiser. We're gonna do a Land Rover versus Land Cruiser next week in Moab, so we gotta go shoot that. GT86 is a BRZ powertrain, yes. Oh, we got another donation from Tiffany Cole. Well, thank you, Tiffany. Um, I'm looking to replace my 08 Impreza. Looking at the 2019 Mazda 3 all-wheel drive and the 2019 Hyundai Kona all-wheel drive. What are the opinion of the two? Well, actually, you're talking to the right guy because Tommy managed to put both of those on rollers. And, right, you put the Kona on yeah. rollers too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I've driven both. Um, personally speaking, honestly, I think that you, with the Kona, get the base model. You don't need the fancy transmission. The base model is really good all-wheel drive. It's just a really good, simple car. The Mazda is a little pricier. It's very low to the ground. It's a great car. It has a beautiful interior. 
it is not exactly a sports car like it used to be. It's definitely much more of a sedate vehicle. They're both really well made, though. Uh, yeah, I um, I would actually, I'm going to take a different approach. I love the Kona with the 1.6 turbo. Did you? Killer engine. Uh, the Mazda 3 is a great car. Uh, I was a little let down with like the power department. Zach behind the camera is a huge Mazda guy. He's kind no, of no, yeah, no, yeah, he's, 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 he's got Mazda I, written on his chest. So yeah, he's like showing us right tattooed. now behind the camera. Oh, wow, Zach. What is that? You added speed to your chest yeah, tattoo. Yeah, he's, okay. he's a speed three friend. Oh, look, interesting. Okay, look, full disclosure, I own a Mazda. But so do I. I was going to say, Tommy, I agree with you on the current Mazda 3 all-wheel drive. I was going to say, if you're in the market for an all-wheel drive Mazda 3, wait for them to put the Sky Active X engine in it. New powertrain but makes it, it more enticing, for me it, at least. Yeah, but it's, it'll be less power. Supposedly, we don't know what Zach is angry power right now. So it's going to be less power. It will probably be less power, but it'll also be more efficient. I don't think, like, with the kind of car the Mazda 3 has become, like, you know, 10 to 15 fewer horsepower is going to kill it. So I love both. Mazda 3 Incredible, I would get the Kona. Oh, I think that's my dad. I would get the Kona. Give <laughs> up Classics is probably my dad. He's commenting. Oh, boy, um, here okay. we go. Last <laughs> few questions here because I know we're running out of time, but this is fun. Um, tell me, why do you look like Greg from Science Studio? Ask my parents. Uh, question, what is the most underrated pickup truck? The most, uh, the, once again, the Nissan Titan. Uh, the regular one, not the XD. It's a really good truck for the price. It's got its own problems, but the engine transmission setup is great. The Pro 4X version of it is really good. We beat the crap out of them. They're very inexpensive right now. All the trucks are great. So far, we're having a hell of a time with great trucks right now. So finding a weak one, mm. but in terms of one that's underrated, I do think it's the Nissan Titan. What do you think of the Toyota 3.5 liter V6? Yeah, it's a really good V6. Um, it's not the world's most efficient, though. Mm. I don't like, uh, if you've ever driven the new Tacoma, it's a great truck, but it's always in the wrong gear. Like, I've, I don't know what they did to the transmission tuning. Toyota, love you guys. You do an amazing truck. But why is your transmission just perpetually in the wrong gear? It's like, if you need third, <laughs> you're going to be in fifth. If you need second, you'll be in fourth. If you need sixth, you'll need you you first. Oh, you don't like manuals oh, anymore. I like the manual Watch the BMW video that oh, he put together. Sakes. God, does he hate them. Oh, Trucker Dan video's last thing. Thanks for the money again. Oh, thank uh, you, Trucker Hyundai Dan. has the best warranty out there as well. Oh, yes. that's true. They really their do have, their killer. warranty is a killer warranty. Um, however, other companies are starting to mimic that warranty. Yeah, actually, I mean, this is what's great about what we live in right now. Like, my old Mercedes 300D had like a 90-day warranty. And if it screwed up, they just like kicked you in the butt and said, it's, it's German, go figure it out. Um, but, uh, like, because these warranties are getting so much longer, the manufacturers have to step up to compete. So now we're seeing a lot more of the 100,000-mile warranties, which is awesome. Volkswagen recently upped their warranty to, to close to 100. Six years, 72,000 bumper 72. to bumper. Bumper to bumper, and they have a really good... Um, Six uh, years? Yeah, that's bumper to bumper. Wow. Uh, so that's really good stuff. Hey, guys, this video actually becomes a regular video after we're done. Wait, Zach, Zach is dying over Sorry. here. I am dying over here. So we actually have several hundred people tuning in right now. Thank you all for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thank you all for watching our live show. But I wanted you, Tommy, to show the find folks watching our show because we didn't do it earlier in the show what they can get if they donate 199 oh. which i know is a big ask right to tfl well we only have a few of these which is why they're so expensive and they cost us so much money to make um but these are our limited edition hoodies hoodies oh don't, i almost said sweatshirts sweater, don't say that sorry dad time, they're hoodies guys. They're hoodies. I know you're watching, Dad. They're hoodies, I promise. But they're awesome. So they say the fast lane truck down the side. Everywhere. Uh, the fast lane car down the other arm. Everywhere. Um, pretty much the only people that have these are like us and then a couple super fans. So if you want to be among the exclusive TFLers, we'll sign them, um, do whatever you want. But they're really, really high quality. Once again, when you guys make these types of contributions, we're able to up our equipment and have better content for you guys because we have better equipment. And if you ever would like to donate not through YouTube's live chat feature for whatever reason, uh, please email us at info at tflcar.com and we'll see what we can do to get you one. Um, you can donate through PayPal on our websites as well. That is correct, Amundo. Tommy, I think it's time for us to get going unless you got anything pressing. Um, n <laughs> no. Um, TFL hoodies designed by Kanye West. That's good. I like that yeah, a lot. Yeah, that's, that's funny. Uh, yeah, no, uh, really that's not. That's a We've nothing very topical and... joke. Yeah, <laughs> very good. That was well done. You should see the Lamborghini he recently designed. <laughs> yeah, oh, did you see that? Yeah. Wow. I, I got a little spit up in my mouth, actually, when that happened. Um, you okay. think Kanye watches our show? 
I'm sure he does. Hi, Kim, he does. if you're watching with your husband. Um, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Take care, and we'll try to answer more questions when this becomes a regular video later on. Yeah. And we'll see you real soon. See ya. All right, we want to play us out, Tommy? Yeah, let me find a song. That's... Oh, he's going to find a particular song. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's us in the background.